awaiting a future in frozen food products. The frozen food section once looked really different and tastier. Here are some frozen foods that completely disappeared from grocery store freezers. Like they never even existed. Swanson TV dinners. When we're done with him, he's going to be a Swanson TV dinner. The warmth and comfort of the classic frozen dinner is a dish so American that it's celebrated on National TV Dinner Day from coast to coast every September 10th. As recently as 2020, surveys estimated that 127 million Americans have at least one every month. But after decades of being a mainstay in homes across the country, the frozen favorite from Swanson's was phased out of the freezer. The Swanson TV Dinner dates back to the Swanson & Sons Foods Company, which sold frozen oven-ready chickens and turkey pot pies in the early 1950s. After a poor winter of sales in 1952 that left them with extra turkey supply, they chose to prepackage it, portion it, freeze it, and sell it along with all the fixings of a classic holiday meal. I think that sounds like a great idea. TV dinners were an instant hit, and Swanson sold over 5,000 of them after their 1953 introduction. And by the same time a year later, they had sold over 10 million. The rousing success led to Swanson being bought out by the Campbell Soup Company just two years after the TV dinner debuted. By the turn of the century, Campbell spun off the Swanson division into its own entity and rebranded it as Pinnacle Foods in 2001. The company still produces frozen dinners, but the TV dinner name is long gone, and the only thing left carrying the once mighty Swanson's name is a line of frozen pot pies. Even with the TV dinner going the way of the standard definition black and white TV, the tradition lives on every time we fire up a microwave dinner. Every morning, every evening. Ego Waffles. Everyone loves Pregos, Legos, and Egos. The classic Ego hit the freezer aisle for the first time in the same year Swanson's TV dinners did, 1953. They were released alongside an Ego branded syrup, and the pair was a big enough hit to eventually be purchased by Kellogg's in 1968. Four years later, the classic Wiggle My Ego slogan was introduced, and Ego Waffles became a household name. Over the years, different varieties and flavors came around, and while some came and went, one that disappeared from the frozen food freezer should have stuck around, Ego Waffles. I wish you'd stay too. As the dad joke name suggests, they were indeed full, as in the hollowed out waffles were pumped to the brim with jelly, featuring classic waffle tastes like strawberry, blueberry, and apple cinnamon. Sales were bolstered by some bizarre but memorable Crocodile Hunter inspired commercials in the early 2000s and a crossover promotion with the movie Star Wars Revenge of the Sith in 2005. But after a near decade long run, Ego Waffles ran empty and were eventually discontinued. Time to say goodbye. Care Bear Waffles. Are you a Care Bear? I'm an intensive Care Bear. Here are some other waffles that fell by the wayside. As long as mass-produced food has existed, a pop culture marketing tie-in has been a way to generate buzz. In this particular case, a cuddly bunch of critters called the Care Bears became a part of every kid's complete breakfast in the 1980s. The Care Bears were a big hit throughout the decade, first hitting the scene in 1981 as part of a line of greeting cards before they became a line of plush teddy bears and eventually a hit Saturday morning cartoon series. As people continued to care about these bears, they were featured in two animated television specials, a pair of Saturday morning cartoon series, and three feature-length animated films across the 1980s. Movies, movies, more movies. And the success led to merchandising of all shapes and sizes. This included a line of Ego-style frozen waffles. Hitting the freezer aisle in 1985 and manufactured by Downy Flake, each box contained 10 square waffles with red berry and blueberry flavors. They also, according to the jingle, included their most important ingredient, a bear hug in every bite. But whatever the ingredients, they weren't as big a hit as their Care Bear namesake and didn't stick around very long. The bears might have cared, but the fact the waffles were pulled from shelves sure sounds like nobody else did. Nobody cares. First time here? Well, it doesn't take more than a finger to hit that subscribe button, so go ahead and smash it. Thanks. 
Boston Cream Toaster Strudel. That better not be my last toaster strudel. Pillsbury Toaster Strudels have been warming our breakfasts and warming our hearts since 1985, marketed as a better alternative to Kellogg's Pop-Tarts. The Kellogg's version had already been around since 1964, with the concept based on a then-new technology from the Post Cereal Company of dehydrating meals and sealing them in foil to maintain freshness, which, believe it or not, was first used on dog food. That might explain the dog-eat-dog -dog competition between toaster strudel and Pop-Tarts that has seen each side come up with new and creative flavor ideas to outsell their rivals. One of Toaster Strudel's great triumphs was the introduction of the Boston Cream Pie flavor. Boston Tea Party, Boston Cream Pie, Boston Rob Mariano. And much similar to the pastry of the same name, the strudel had a custard filling with a chocolate topping. However, the boxes slowly disappeared from freezers, prompting a Change.org petition to spring up in March of 2020, demanding their return. But by November of 2021, Pillsbury officially took to Twitter, now X, to inform one one disgruntled fan that Boston Cream Pie Toaster Strudel was officially toast. However, if your loyalty to Toaster Strudel has been tested by this ordeal, their rivals over at Kellogg's Pop-Tarts carry a Boston Cream Donut flavor. We're certainly not scared of swapping sides, as long as we're on the side that tastes the best. We win either way! Jell-O Pudding Pops why does he want Jell-O? Because he's comfortable with Jell-O. It was 1964 when the slogan, There's always room for Jell-O. First hit TV screens, and truer words were never spoken. Frozen Jell-O pudding pops were a massive success. A unique treat to beat the summer heat, pudding pops raked in a cool $100 million in their first year of sales. And by their fifth year had tripled that number to $300 million in annual sales. But things eventually came back down to earth over the years. We're going back. And by 2004, Jell-O subsidized production of Pudding Pops by licensing the name to the Good Humor Breyers Ice Cream Company's Popsicle division. After all, who better to increase sales of frozen treats than a frozen treat company? But Popsicle put their own spin on the taste, look, and texture of Pudding Pops that turned off the remaining customers, and production ceased in the 2010s. It looks like even a hot-selling frozen treat can get left out in the cold. Hold that say, Polly. Flintstones Push Pops. Wilma, where's my dinner? This is a sweet summer treat that made the freezer aisle shout. Everyone's favorite modern Stone Age family hit the frozen food section in 1990 with a push pop treat that was the latest in a long line of Flintstones merchandising that included comic books, video games, and even branded Flintstones vitamins. Early sales were boosted by a very 90s commercial that featured a rapping Fred and Barney dropping what the TikTok crowd might call a fire mixtape, complete with sporting sunglasses indoors. I uh, usually don't like sunglasses indoors, but that pineapple really pulls it off. The cylindrical treats completed the Flintstones experience with names like Bedrock Berry, Lime Rock Lime, and Yabba Dabba Do Orange, and were more interactive than the average popsicle because of their push-up namesake. Sales eventually wound down by the end of the decade, and Flintstones Push Pops wound up being pushed back to the Stone Age. Nestle still sells plain, non-cartoon, non-wrapping push-ups, but the appeal is lost without the Flintstones' name and likeness, turning this Yabba Dabba Do into a Yabba Dabba Don't. Don't! Just don't! Klondike Bar Choco Taco What'd you do for a Klondike Bar? Kill your wife? Do you remember the classic jingle? What would you do for a Klondike bar? Well, according to the backlash after it disappeared, folks would do much more for a Klondike bar Choco Taco. With roots that trace back to an independently owned ice cream truck in Philadelphia in 1983, the taco-shaped ice cream sandwich spent nearly four decades as a fixture of the frozen food aisle. But just in time for summer 2022, and right when a Choco Taco is in its highest demand, the frozen delight disappeared. Come on, buddy. It's time to go. 
The outrage was swift and viral, but Klondike Bar's parent company, Unilever, cited a steady decline in sales of the Choco Taco as the reason they pulled the plug. The band Cinderella once sang, you don't know what you got till it's gone. So it's hard to imagine everyone who suddenly wanted the Choco Taco back after it was gone also wanted one as badly when it was still around. Either way, we'll all have to settle for ice cream in cone, sandwich, or bowl form, since this Mexi-inspired shape seems to have said adios for good. Adios, amigo! Trader Joe's Cheeseless Cheesecake On sale at Trader Joe's When it comes to the Frozen Foods Disappearing Act, the most mystifying magicians reside at Trader Joe's. Over the years, the chain has developed a habit of discontinuing a who's who list of the most popular frozen items the store has had to offer. Some of the more outrageous frozen faves to be discontinued include Trader Joe's Tofu Edamame Nuggets, Trader Joe's Chipino Seafood Stew, Trader Joe's Salmon and Vegetable Croquettes, and the To Die For Trader Joe's Handmade Chocolate Ganache Torte Dessert. You willing to die for this? One item in particular drew a bigger customer outcry than the rest because it disappointed two specific demographics of Trader Joe's shoppers, dessert lovers and vegans. Trader Joe's cheeseless cheesecake was completely dairy-free and made with a lima bean base as well as oats and coconut oil. A big hit with vegans, it also passed the test amongst meat eaters, and the anger over its disappearance might be the first time in history that carnivores and herbs herbivores actually agreed on something. It was only one time, Jay. Trader Joe's Cookie Butter Cheesecake Those butter cookies you sent were tasty, and the almond ones, ugh! Oh. Not only did Trader Joe's axe their cheeseless cheesecake, they put the freeze on the real kind, too. An offshoot of Trader Joe's wildly popular cookie butter spread, which is infused with Belgian speculose cookies, the cookie butter cheesecake was good enough to take the cake. The base ingredient of the company's wildly popular cookie butter spread was voted the second favorite overall Trader Joe's product at the company's ninth annual Customer Choice Awards, so it made sense to join it with a cake dessert. Totally worth it. Cookie Butter Cheesecake was available in a full 22 ounce format for around seven bucks, or superbly snackable cheesecake bites for around five bucks. And no matter how you sliced it, they were always a hit. Sometime around 2018, customers noticed a decline in stock, and eventually their cookie cheesecake combo cakes were completely gone from the freezer section. There are still a few run of the mill cheesecakes available, but we'd gladly trade them all with Trader Joe's just to have our favorite back. Literally any time. Marie Callender's Pumpkin Pecan Streusel Pie. Then you give up on anyone ever loving you. Go to Marie Callender's, buy a pie, and eat it in your car in the parking lot. Although the brand behind this item is revered as a frozen and shelf-stable brand of entrees, the origin of this frozen food is anything but cold. The original Marie Callender lived in California, and her pies were fresh baked from the oven, back when she and her husband Cal first sold pies in the 1930s. The pair opened the very first Marie Callender pie shop in 1964, with a pie oven in the window and fresh pies and coffee served all day. The baked goods were a big hit, and after expanding into a nationwide restaurant chain, Marie Callender's branched out into the retail business of frozen foods. What the hell are you doing? You're just pouring melted butter onto frozen foods! Today, the brand sells nine different varieties of frozen cream pies and 11 different frozen fruit and seasonal pies. But as of 2020, one of the company's favorites was pulled from the lineup, the Pumpkin Pecan Streusel Pie. It only lasted five years after being introduced in November of 2015 as a no-brainer combo of two of Marie Callender's biggest sellers, Pumpkin Pie and Pecan Pie. But some relationships just don't last that long and grow cold eventually, especially if they're already frozen. In the end, the power couple pairing went their separate ways and ghosted the freezer aisle. I'm a gray ghost too. Stay for seconds and tap or click another great video. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to join our notification squad.